Hey guys, coming at you today with a recipe I had to figure out because I love keto ice cream and I love peanut butter. And one of my last memories before everything shut down and I went keto in 2020 was having this ice cream sundae with like a hot peanut butter fudge on it and it was like a Reese's one with chocolate fudge too. Oh, it was so good. And I do miss it and I always want a peanut butter fudge to go on any of my ice creams. I always like to doll it up. I don't like just plain vanilla. So I figured out a keto peanut butter hot fudge recipe. So let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, thanks for joining me. My name is Alicia and I'm a pastry chef with a sweet tooth. And I'm here to show you all the tips and tricks on how to make the best keto recipes possible. So if you enjoy my recipes, please hit the subscribe button down there, give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment, share with all your friends and family. It all helps my channel grow and to bring you new keto recipes every Saturday. Today, a peanut butter hot fudge sauce for my delicious ice cream recipes. I have so many on my channel. Ice cream is like my biggest weakness. I love it and it's so hard for me to hear people go into Dairy Queen or we got uh, Amstel ice cream that we went to. That's where I had that Sunday. It was amazing. And all summer long I want ice cream. So I want to make sure I have my ice cream on hand and have some of this peanut butter fudge to put on top. A lot of times I'll just like throw a scoop of peanut butter on top of my ice cream just because I'm lazy. But this is definitely way more delicious than just putting a scoop of peanut butter on my ice cream. It's a pretty simple recipe. I'm only going to make a small batch today because I'm already running low on my sweet and condensed milk recipe. I'll link that up there for you. I usually make a big batch. I made a 32 ounce. I would have made even bigger, but I didn't have enough heavy cream to make like a four or five times batch because I put this in the freezer and I use it all summer long. So normally I make a really big batch of my keto sweet and condensed milk. I'm going to need some for another recipe and I'm going to make this recipe also. So I'm going to use two different containers. One I'm going to put in the microwave and heat up and I'm going to pour the sweet and condensed milk over my chocolate chips. And now I have not done this. I only have the Choc Zero peanut butter chocolate chips. I have a feeling I'm going to need extra of these to make it a fudge sauce because they are really soft. They don't have as much butter solids, I think, in them as most. I made this with the new Lily's peanut butter chocolate chips, and it was perfect. It was so good. I think I still use some extra chips, but I might need to add some extra for this. I only saw them at Walmart a couple of times, and I bought them just to eat because they were so good. I'm going to do three and a half. Oh, let's see how much I have in here. Maybe I can make a double batch. Not a double batch, but a regular size batch. Do I have seven ounces? Oh, yes I do. Okay. So I had enough to do a whole batch of the peanut butter. I also want to try, I just bought Chalk Zero butterscotch chips. So I am going to try and experiment, see if I can make a butterscotch sauce also. So to this, we're going to add, normally I'd add a tablespoon of butter. I'm going to add a tablespoon of peanut butter. Now I bought this bucket of peanut butter on Amazon and I'm not a huge fan of it. It's called Once Again Unsweetened Peanut Butter. And it's just impossible to mix it. It's like so hard. So I'm just gonna take some oil and some peanut butter and I need 0.5. That's one tablespoon. So I'm gonna melt that together and pour it over the chocolate chips. I was gonna put it in a metal bowl, but because I'm not sure if I'm gonna to need to add more chips. I might need to melt it a little bit more and I don't wanna to have to get a pot of water on and you know do a double boiler and all that. So to seven ounces of sweet and condensed milk, doing, normally I do three and a half ounces for a hot fudge sauce for like, you know, if I use semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm gonna do four and a half ounces and we'll see if that's good. Okay, so I'm gonna put this into the microwave just until it's nice and melted and liquidy. We're gonna pour it over our chips. I'm interested, I haven't even opened up these butterscotch chips. They were on sale, Shock Zero, so I thought I'd pick some up. Ooh, these look much better than the peanut butter ones. Guess we'll do a little taste test. 
they're good. They have that weird, I don't know, like their chips are just really soft. They kind of like stick in your teeth. So it's pretty warm, but peanut butter is nowhere near melted. Break that up a little bit. Once I'm done with that tub, I'm not buying that again. I'll just buy my favorite brand right now, BJ's Organic Natural Creamy Peanut Butter. It is like the best tasting peanut butter I've ever had. I stock up on it. I don't even know if that peanut butter is going to melt in there. Okay, a couple more seconds, see if it'll work. Let's see how much sweet and condensed milk we have left and see what we can make for butterscotch sauce. Let's see if our peanut butter is anywhere near melted. Doesn't look like it. Try to get it all broken up. If you used a good natural peanut butter, you wouldn't have this problem. <laughs> we're at only 111, so we're not super hot. Give it a couple more seconds. I have it on 50% power, so that's why it's not heating super fast. Okay, we're at 126. Well, hopefully that will melt once we get it in there. We'll pour it over our chips. And cover that for like five minutes so that it'll get all nice and melty in there. See how much we got left. Okay, we can make a half batch of the butterscotch. So 2.75. And this I am going to add a tablespoon of butter to. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing with that. Heat it up, pour it over there, and see if that works. Okay, we're up to 150. That's good. Put it over the chips. Got the butter in there. Normally my sweet condensed has butter in it, but I left it out this time and it seems to be working fine. So if you want to cut some carbs, calories, not carbs, calories or fat, you can leave the butter out of my sweetened condensed milk. It makes it easier in the long run because then you don't have butter chunks. You don't have to warm it up in order to use it then. Let's see how this is doing. Seems like it's pretty melted. Might just need a little bit of a blast to get the last few chips, but... I think that's actually good. We do still have some peanut butter chunks in there just because that peanut butter sucks, but there is your peanut butter fudge sauce. Be a better color if the peanut butter got in there too. That's the other thing I don't like about Chalk Zero's chips. It's like, meh. Chalk Zero does sell a chocolate peanut butter sauce. I wasn't a huge fan of it. I feel like it tastes too much like monk fruit instead of like chocolate and peanut butter. Give this a taste. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. You can always add more sweetness to it if you want. Might be sweet enough for me. <laughs> I've been crazy with the sweetness lately. Ever since I had Van, my sweetness level went back up to a thousand. I think that's pretty good. I'll try that in a minute on some keto ice cream. I'm going to show you how it gets nice and like, you know, how hot fudge does. You know, it gets that thick but not solid thing. That's what the allulose does. It keeps stuff soft even in the freezer. Like if you put this in the freezer it would probably just be a big scoop of like fudge, like hard fudge, not solid. Let's try the butterscotch. A little bit darker which makes sense because the chips were a little bit darker but that looks like a good Hot fudge consistency also. Maybe a little bit runnier, but we'll see how it performs on some keto ice cream. Let's give it a taste real quick. That's good. Mm. Yummy. Be back to try some in a minute. Okay, time to try some butterscotch sauce and peanut butter sauce. Mm -hmm. Haven't made my ice cream yet for the season, so I just have some of my cannoli from last year. looks delicious. This has been sitting out for a while, but it's still pretty liquidy. Let me just heat a little bit of this up. I'll have the macros below of like per tablespoon. I don't need a lot because I don't have a lot here. And I also want to try the butterscotch one. See how it reheats too. Start bubbling. I'll do 
do one side peanut butter, one side butterscotch. That's good to me. Time to try the side first. Mm -mm. It stays nice and runny on there. It just hardens enough to be a nice fudge sauce. Mm -mm -mm. That's delicious. Now for the butterscotch. Nice and runny. Oh, that looks like it's going to be good. We are starting to stop spreading. It's hardening up. That is delicious. So I've proven it's not that hard to make any flavor keto sundae sauce you want. Just might need to add a couple more chips in. Mm. It's good to go. Mm. Delicious. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you make this recipe for yourself. Let me know in the comments below if you do a little keto sundae party or anything like that. That's totally what I would do for this. Like. I love seeing things like that and I'm always like, I wish I could do that keto. Well now I got peanut butter sauce, a butterscotch sauce, a hot fudge sauce, I have staple whipped cream, I got sprinkles, all sorts of things for a delicious keto ice cream party if you wanted to do a little ice cream bar for something. Don't forget to check out my Amazon links and the blog link to the full recipe in the description box below. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you haven't already, and as always I'll be back with more keto recipe videos. Bye guys, happy keto ice cream making.